All right, everybody, welcome to the new episode of Digitized Desperados. We are on episode 21 now, and uh, today we watched, or this week we watched Kung Fu Hustle. Yeah. I don't know if anyone cares, but this will be our last episode recorded in 2018, so. Probably, yeah. Well, yeah, definitely. Probably. Big dating. Yes. I don't know when it will be uploaded, but yeah, it'll yeah, be well. I'm just saying, this is, our send-off. In 2019. <laughs> this is our send-off to 2018. Um, so this is 2004, directed by Steve Chow, yeah. who is apparently pretty well known. Yeah, I know. I've, I've seen a lot of his other films. They're really good. I've heard of a, I've heard of Shaolin Soccer, um, yep. which was his movie before this. Oh, I don't think he's the guy who does, did Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, so. Did he? Or did he? Or no? Like, it's this. This is uh, compared. To, never mind. It's been yeah, compared it's to like on that level. Never mind. Yeah. Big wrong. Don't back. listen to me. I'm wrong all the time. <laughs> you're, you're probably reading Wikipedia. So am I. Yes. It does make it seem like that. But um, this is a good old uh, kung fu action comedy. It is. I okay. I have really mixed feelings about this movie. <laughs> yeah. I, I liked it a lot, and I knew it, it's just stupid and ridiculous. Okay. And I knew it would have a lot to talk about at the very least. Yeah, for sure. Because, uh, you know, I can tell Stephen Chow is an amazing director from this movie. Yes. He did a fantastic job. It's so consistent. The, mm-hmm. the action scenes, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Holy crap. But, but then you have these moments and these scenes that are just... What? Why? All right, can I get an example? <laughs> um, I didn't know how we wanted to go about it, but there's this chase scene in the middle of... No, I love it! It's great! <laughs> it's, it's, it's like the first half, the first half where it just turns into Roadrunner, like legitimately. Yeah, no, just yeah. have it straight they up made human scenes. cartoons. Which... Was so tonally off. Okay, there's the scene a little bit after that where a guy has a, um, you know, like a har- they call him the harpist. He uses like a Chinese harp. Yeah. Name of it. But he he's using it to like slice things in the distance. That's way like, later. Yeah. It's super intense. I don't know about that. One. Um, Ruby isn't that long. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. It's this really intense, really violent. See, he cuts a cat in half. I think that was supposed to be a little tongue in cheek with the cat, though, because it was. Yeah, the cat was supposed to be kind of funny, but um, because they did it with the shadow, which was really yeah. neat. Um, but it, it, it's very violent. It's very serious. Like the Roadrunner scene, you could show to like a six-year-old, and they'd get it. They'd laugh at it. But, but it, the scene with the harp, it's like it's just straight up a kung fu movie. I know? love that whole Roadrunner scene because that's right after another comedy scene where it just it just took it to a whole new level because it was just freaking. It, the it, this is the whole knife throw scene. Stabbed constantly. <laughs> okay, that scene was very dark dark comedy. I like that scene. But the, so, it's like it, so this so the general plot is this guy wants to be part of the, Let's go over the, the general the plot facts, first. The, yeah. characters, these characters, weirdly enough, have names. I yeah. they don't say them. They never say them. Because the main character is Sing and played by Stephen Chow. <laughs> yeah. But he's not really the main character. He's the main guy, but yeah. He's, he's the protagonist, but he's not the main character. Yeah. So he and his uh, friend go to this town, and they pretend to be part of the Axe Gang, and then uh, one thing leads to another, and the actual ad- Axe Gang shows up, and they piss him off, and this the town is now in the war with the gang. And it, the, you'd think the town is like this poor slum called Pigsty something. It's yeah. Just Pigsty. Pigsty Alley. Yeah. Pigsty Alley. And you, these Axe Gang members come up, and there's like a thousand of them. There's yes. way too many. I and love the Axe Gang. They're all like sharpening axes, and they're, they're really menacing. losers with hatchets. <laughs> they and have then, dance parties. And then they walk up to the Pigsty Alley, like poor people in rags, and they're just like, does does anyone want to die today? And all of them oh, fucking <laughs> step forward. And they start beating the crap out of the axe game. Yeah. Well, some of them do. There's three of them. There's three kung fu yeah. masters. Yeah, basically, these three kung fu masters decided to move to this like town because it was smaller and quieter, and so they wouldn't have to deal with as much or something like that. They were like well, they retired. Don't it. They, liter- yeah, they literally said conclusion. Me. Everyone has the reasons. Yeah. And so, yeah, they're there, and they have to defend the city. And, uh, man, this, this plot goes 
all over the place. Yeah. Well, you have you basically have two plots. You have the plot of Pigsty Alley, which is the three Kung Fu Masters and, and the two and Lady. Yeah. Um, and you also have the other plot, which isn't doesn't feel like the main plot of seeing the main character trying to join the Axe Gang and eventually joining them. Mm-hmm. Uh, which feels like a B plot to me. I, yeah. I don't know why Singh is considered the main character. He really isn't. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the plot does get all over the place. And but with that, uh, they come together, and there's a part where he fucking. Uh, I want to get back to the knife scene because it's so fucking funny. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a good scene. Um. So he. To get into the gang, he's told that he has to kill somebody. So he goes back to that town and tries to kill the landlady. Um, so he tries to well, throw a knife. Kill, he tries to kill a good number of people. He tries to kill the guy with glasses on the train. He tries to kill the the mute girl yeah. selling ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he, he has like deep childhood connections. But we'll get to that plot sure. later. Also, there's a lot of like. This is, yeah, there's a lot of like a lot of things like, going on here in the movie. It's just like, oh no, we're in- still introducing stuff. But I mean, it all makes know, sense when you, when you watch it. Like, yeah, it flows really well. Yeah, it feels yeah. like a kiddie version of a Tarantino movie to me. <laughs> it's That's a weird way of putting it, but I get it. it. It's a little... It, it's basically like PG Tarantino. Like, straight up PG. Like, maybe yeah. a little PG-13. But uh, people die. A lot of, it is, a lot of it's very slapstick, yeah. very cartoon. So, it's like... He, he tries to throw the knife at this lady, fucking ricochets and hits a wall and then hits him in the side, and his friend tries to do it, and he fucking whiffs it and just chucks it right at his other arm. And then he pulls I, I really back. like the part where he pulls back to throw it, and he stabs <laughs> <laughs> him. And he stabs him. He just fucking stabs him. And then he throws the handle at it, and he's like, where'd the knife go? <laughs> and then he hits his arm. Yeah, the, the the handle hits her in the face, and then the la- the landlady's just like, "Who's throwing handles?" And of course, it ends with him just picking up a thing of snakes, <laughs> and drops yeah. it on his friend, <laughs> and the snakes like bo- like double bite. Him. Yeah, they bite him in his <laughs> lips, <laughs> and then like you get later like the. F- one of the multiple, like, weird CG moments where he's got, like, huge lips. Oh, yeah. God, that, that's probably the weakest scene, where he's, that like, he's, in, he's the, in the... He's in the weird, like, like post hideout in the middle of the city. Yeah. Like, it's by a traffic light. It's, like, yeah. a weird traffic light post, and he's, like... It's Freaking just, out. Some of the CG in this movie is just weird. Some of it's bad. Yeah, like, so just, yeah probably just... The CG better word. in this movie like, is... Bad. A means to an end. I'll give it that, and that's about all I can say. Uh, um, the I'd say one of the worst uses of CG that I have to bring out is with the harpist scene, which the harpist fight is probably my favorite scene. It's it's amazing. Which fight? Um, but the, the harpist. Oh, the harpist. Okay, yeah. The assassins. Is it the part where they yeah. summon the samurai stands? <laughs> no, that's a. I actually like the samurai weird guys, but I hate the part where you you see the effect of the harps. Like he'll he'll play a note and then it'll send out. Like a like an like old a knife or something. But then later on, they actually show it as a scimitar. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. And he starts weird. shooting weapons out of it, and it's like that just what? ruins it. It's cool <laughs> when you can't see it, you know. When it just turns into a knife, it's like ah, that's so lame. And then it's like spectral fists and samurai dudes. Yeah. Then it turns into samurai dudes, which I thought was really cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then there's the whole fucking goofy scene where he's trying to, like, watch the fight, and he's like, get the fuck out of my way. Yeah. Yeah. The comedy on this movie, I think, when it's on point, it's on point. I, like I said, I have mixed feelings about this movie. I think there's a lot of good bits. The scene where he's trying to throw the knives is amazing. Yeah. Uh, All of the fight scenes, like, the serious, like, people beating each other up, they're amazing. There's a part where he's trying to pick a guy to fight. (laughs) <laughs> and they're all yeah. like, he's like, you with the glasses, and he stands up, he's fucking ripped. He's like, oh, you, you short guy back there, and he stands up, he's fucking tall as hell. He points at a, at a child, and he's ripped. <laughs> he's jacked, and he's like, okay, none of you can fight. <laughs> and they all go with it, they all, like, agree with him. <laughs> they don't want to start any shit. 
Like, just everybody in this town is really good at fighting. For no reason. It's a, it's a treat. <laughs> so, uh, where do we go from here? Um, we could probably talk about the, the separate plots, because, uh, like, there's a whole thing with Sing, and like, oh, uh, he's, he was visited by a homeless man when he oh, was Oh, yeah. Here. Yeah. So, yeah, the reason he's the chosen one, apparently, is because he was visited by some homeless man who made him pay for, like, a ten, or, like, a two-cent uh, Buddhist palm instruction manual, and, uh, so that's why he wants to fight, because he, he felt he was the he chosen one. He studied it for all of, like, five minutes before he, he got beat up and lost yeah. it. He got beat up trying to save this deaf woman, um... That they I were trying know. to steal candy from, <laughs> and then I know you guys deaf, so what is yeah, mute? She's mute. Okay, um, yeah. I, I have to mention this. That scene is literally the same exact thing as when Jonathan meets Erina and JoJo part. No, <laughs> oh, it is. Except this it time is. they piss on him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they literally <laughs> just immediately piss on him. I like, think I looked away from the screen for a little bit, and I looked back, and that's what was happening, and I'm like, wait, wait a minute. I need to totally be here. <laughs> oh, man. It was all of them, too. Yeah, no, they all circle around the kid, and they just piss on him. It's like, what the oh, fuck? Oh, man. That was, that was really good. If it was one person, it'd be like, okay, I kind of... But it's the group. Do that. But it's literally like seven guys. It's so ridiculous. I mean, they're literally stealing a lollipop, like from somebody. They don't even steal it. They just walk away. Oh, yeah, they're trying <laughs> to. Oh, man. And then and then uh, Sing is just like, and that was the day I learned that good never win. <laughs> like, okay. just like, that was okay. the lesson you got out of it. It's kind of implied that because of that day, he ran away from home and was never seen again. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's implied that the landlady landlord were his parents, right? Uh, yes. I don't know if that's yeah, implied or if it's just they're treating him like a son. Because, no, there's one scene at the very end where they're taking care of him once he's injured. And they're like, and they're like they if our son say, weren't dead, he'd be about that guy's age right now. And, and oh, yeah. Um, and they never say what happened to him. They just say, we lost him or something. Mm -hmm. um, but... It's implied that Singh decides to live a life of crime for the rest of his life because he's like that guy's always mm -hmm. like the worst possible message. <laughs> I don't think this was trying too hard with the messages. I know. I think this movie just wanted to be fun and stupid. <laughs> yes, yeah, and it succeeded. It yeah, it does. The whole series, <laughs> fucking. <laughs> it's right after they the they fucking fail to get them with the. Uh, the two musicians, and the landlady's just in their car. Yes. <laughs> Apparently that was a reference to a different movie. Yeah, uh, this there's is... a whole thing on the Wikipedia page, which is just references to other works, and it's really long. Yeah, this yeah. movie is, like, apparently, like, a referential to a ton of Stephen Chow's other works. They literally do the blood elevator scene from The Shining. The Shining. Oh, yeah! <laughs> like, it breaks the... It, he has no to go in to break the it. guy out, yeah. No one mentions yeah. it. it. It It's never brought up. Um, it's like Singh's having a hallucination, basically, when he's going to break out. out of the nowhere. Thing. And it's just the blood coming out of the thing, and I'm like, are you serious? Also, there's there's the scene uh, where Singh steps on a guy's soccer ball, apparently in reference to Shaolin soccer. Yeah, I was going to mention that one. Which, have you seen Shaolin Soccer, Max? No, but I do know of it. Okay. I might, no I, wait, you I, know what? I think I might have seen that. I saw a bunch of them at one point. I, don't, I can't I, remember if people think it's good or bad. I think people, it's like a cult classic. Like, some people love it. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't do that well. Um, like I think I did see this once. Actually, yeah, it was a while back, though. Uh, I I thought it was fun, but that's a different story. Right. I was just curious. Yeah. Um, we're we're still missing a lot of stuff. So the X gang gets really angry at Pigsty Alley, especially after the Harpist thing. Yeah, because they they Cause hired the them. They were the number two the best assassins in the land. They yeah. they find out the landlord and landlady are basically the strong strongest people in the world, except 
It turns out they're actually number two to another guy called the, the Beast. Beast. The Beast. <laughs> Who is really ridiculous. He is that kind of guy, it's literally the trope of, oh, I'm staying in jail because I'm waiting for somebody that I can find to kill me. That, that made me angry. I was like, <laughs> ugh. <laughs> Uh, he's kind yeah. of similar to Jotaro in that he's staying no, in jail no, for his own no, no wait Jotaro, Jotaro was I'm protecting the people around me because yeah, that's I true. have a weird ghost but no also control the ghost. <laughs> after he gets out of jail to prove his worth he fucking takes the dude's gun and like oh, shoots himself yeah, yeah. in the head oh, and catches yes. the bullet yes he does do that Oh no! except he doesn't even have a stand he, he just, just did that. that. Good. He well, he could have a stand. Super speed. <laughs> we also turns into a fucking frog. Oh yeah, yeah. frog <laughs> style, the toad style. But we're skipping some steps. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. Um, but, I yeah, think the just this old like man in like his underwear and sandals, but that don't even the fit him. Powerful fighter in the world. I think one of the things I did not like about this movie is that it got a little too wrapped up in its own internal logic. It re- the, the, the scene between the landlord and landlady and fighting the beast felt really like, like Japanese shonen anime. Like really, ah, I'm using this move. That move is nothing against me. Ah, I'm going to use this move, <laughs> but a little bit better this time. Yeah. Ah, you know, it felt really like, really boring. I don't know. I see it, yeah, with the, the it, tiger it's power roar. Free, basically, it like you you, you establish you establish the the three kung fu masters as the best, and then you establish the harpists as the best, and then you establish the landlord and landlady as the best, and then you establish the beast as the best, and then you establish Singh as the best. You know, <laughs> yeah, yep. which is it, it's hilarious. It's that, but I think when it when it gets to the landlord and landlady. Versus the Beast. I think that's where it should have stopped. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think that's too far. But then you go even farther. Yeah. Well, then they took it to the sky. <laughs> Which, literally. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah. He's he's literally during the like final battle. From the atmosphere, he catches on fire. <laughs> oh, After man. he kicks a fucking hawk on the way up. We could talk a- for days about the last scene so <laughs> the stupid. last like 30 minutes well not 30 minutes a little bit less than that but yeah the whole final battle yeah yeah it's great because the beast turns into a frog he like well just he the intro like, to it is also great where thing, he like just stomps a bunch of dudes feet <laughs> literally flat <laughs> that was amazing jackhammers them down yes before um, that, it like uh, Singh is like exiting a building while all the goons are like around him, oh like around the building, God, and <laughs> it cuts to a door opening that you think is the one that Singh, uh, Singh just went out of. No, but it's it's freaking the beast like picking his nose. No, it was um the whole setup to the scene where the so Singh is in Pigsty Alley and the fog of the Axe Gang, Axe Gang. <laughs> I also said Fox. I think I'm playing too much Metal Gear. Um, the X- in five. Is... No, XOF. It's yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so gang. the X-Gang is invading Pixi Alley, and they all crowd around a door. There's like a hundred of them crowded mm-hmm. around this door. And you think, you're just expecting Open Sing to come out of there with his new new suit, new outfit, because he powered up. And, but no, the Beast comes out of it, and nothing. Happens. Yeah, yeah, the but beast comes, comes out, out of him. He's like, "Oh, we can't find this door. guy." <laughs> and it pans and down to like a different door, door, door opening, like, way down towards the bottom. And yeah. it's like, "Oh, there he is." <laughs> that was great. That was really subtle too. Like they didn't call any attention to it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, he gets his. Oh yeah, he got his face literally punched in before that. Yeah. No, oh yeah. Like, in a full body cast, and then. The, he gets healed because he's the he one. He gets healed, and then when when the the beast comes out to uh, try to fight him, it shows a video of like fucking caterpillar turning into a butterfly. Oh yeah! yeah. <laughs> As Sing like burst out of his bandages, he had like a full body cast that he burst out of. 
That was a little yeah, there's a shot funny. later of just like the empty bandages. <laughs> and then he's out and he's in this like white full like this white tunic. <laughs> and he's like clean shaven. Yeah. He, he looks found... like a completely different guy at that point. Yeah. yeah. So and then he's just and then he's the big big strong guy. So I guess we didn't really talk about the three kung fu masters. Oh yeah, that was the first one guy is art. good at kicking, the other is good with spears, and the other is like has metal rings. Yeah. Uh the metal ring guy, the tailor, his his weapon is the coolest thing. It's so awesome. It sounds so cool, and he's so extra with it. Like he poses all the time. Yeah, like, yeah. It looks great. It's these like metal rings that go on his arms, like bracelets, and he like he'll like like shuffle them up to the ends of his arms, and then like somebody like will try to hit him with an axe, and he'll just block it with the metal. So cool. So yeah. Uh, the other two weren't really as big of characters, really. They didn't really have characters. They were just kind of yeah. off Kung Fu Master. You know? I think one of... Did, wasn't that guy's name Donut? Yeah, one, one of, them of them was Donut. Donut. He, I think it was died. the... Uh, Donut was the yeah, baker, I, because if you look early on, they, like, show them, like, technically being skilled with their weapons, but, like, just using it in every day. Like, the baker is using a staff to uh, roll, like, dough. The other guy, yeah. the tailor, the has the Vexus rings. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, the first guy, guy is, like, lifting it because he's, like, able to lift a bunch of heavy stuff because his legs are really strong. Yeah. The other one we're missing is actually one of the first ones we see. He's known as the coolie, which is a term for just a laborer. Yeah, that's the kick guy. He's the... And he's, like, got yes. all the bags on his back. And they're like, oh, are you sure you can handle it? And he's like, nah, I'm good. He just kicks yep. the last bag up onto it. Right. Yep. Which was a pretty cool intro. It was yeah. the very beginning. Well... The real intro. Oh yeah, <laughs> just it it sets the tone of the movie pretty well. I think. No, it doesn't. It's it so stupid. Is, it makes you think this is going to be like a gang warfare thing, but it's not. I mean, yeah, that's, that's right. But it's still like the the comedy is still there. No, it's silly. It's just yeah. a lot like a lot darker, I guess. Because you start. Oh no, yeah, I mean day. like the, the very very beginning, yeah, but like then they quickly like when they. So, it's a setup where these gang members are, like, beating the ship out of a police officer in the police office, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and uh, they, they're like, don't fuck with us, or something like that. And they leave, and a fucking rival gang, because it's, they, you think this is, like, the main bad guys? No, it's the fucking Axe gang that shows up and kills them, because the police had paid them off. And there's just, like, a million dudes show up, and they all yeah. have axes. They all have axes. The, the music starts playing, and he's, like, dancing as he's beating the shit out of this guy. And then you have, like, I think during the title sequence, it's just, like, they're having a dance party. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and it's just, I, axe I, gang, yeah. I wasn't a big fan of the stupid dance thing. Oh, I thought it was fun. No, I, 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 it endeared me to Axe Gang. I think it's, yeah. I think it's too obvious of like a parody thing, you know. Yeah, I don't know, but it just it looked like they were actually just, just having fun. For me, where I'm like, this, is, yeah, I like oh. just a gang of dudes with axes, and that's their gimmick. <laughs> I, I, okay, that's fair. Uh, so, so anything else? I don't really have much else to say about this movie. It's kind of very simple and straightforward. Yeah. Well, um, I think my general thoughts on this movie, um, I, I don't love it. I have a lot of problems with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, um, definitely has problems. It's an amazing movie to just, like, sit down and watch with your friends. Like, it's yeah. really fun and quick, and there's not a whole lot of dialogue or anything. Yeah. But it's... I, I think the Roadrunner scene goes way too far. In making I thought it that was. Too. I I disagree um, with you on that, but I I thought it was stupid fun. To but, me, uh, yeah, I was just like, really? I can okay, see. Okay, we're doing the Roadrunner thing now. To me, okay. how long it goes on really like ruins. It's the not that movie. long. It's it's too long. <laughs> Any okay. longer than like, okay, you have the scene uh, when the Axane shows up and the landlady runs away to her bed. 
Yeah. That was long enough. That was really quick, which is all you need for a gag like that. Okay. But, I don't know. The chase scene, uh, it just really doesn't sit well with me. Well, anyways, uh, is that all you have to say? Uh, yeah, I'm done. Uh, yeah. yeah, I would say this is pretty good. Uh, I'm ready for ratings, but uh, this is pretty good. I don't think it's... Uh, I, I don't think it's the best movie I've ever seen, but I, I think it's still really funny and it's a lot of fun. Uh, if you like this, definitely check out Stephen Chow's other work. If you didn't like how some of the comedy was done in this, I think uh, Stephen Chow also has a lot more like m serious stuff. It's not completely serious ever, but it's a lot uh, like similar I'm actually, style. I'm really curious now as to what his other stuff is like because yeah. the cinematography in this movie is so good yeah. and the acting. Oh, yeah. It's all amazing. Like, technically, it's super good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think I will check out some of his other stuff. Maybe not Shaolin Soccer, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shaolin Soccer, I'd say, is the only other one that I remember being that, like, same level of comedy. Uh-huh. I think I also checked out God of Cookery at one point. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's a great title. That is a, that is a title. Yeah. Uh, that's martial arts with food. You, I don't have to explain that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently he has some, like, James Bond-themed ones. I'm looking at his, like, uh, movie list. He has one called From Beijing with Love. <laughs> and another one that just says Forbidden City Cop, but the image has a giant thing that says 007 on it. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. It sounds like a bootleg or parody. I think it's parody. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This guy's actually a pretty well-respected director, from what I yeah. can tell. So yeah, overall, uh, I like this. I give it a honestly, seven out of talking, ten. Sorry, talking <laughs> talking about this movie made me like it a little bit more. Yeah. I, uh, I think while watching it, I was just pretty put off by that roadrunner scene. It's pretty. It's fairly early. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think the last the fight scene between the land the landlords the plural and the the beast is a little too long, but apart from that, you know, it's not that bad. Yeah. Uh, so I'd say six point five, maybe. Yeah. All right. Maybe six. Yeah. Six. Yeah, I'll give it a six. That's my that's my rating. That's my final answer. <laughs> Overall, I enjoyed it. Incorrect. It was a five. No. Oh, okay, you just gonna talk over. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Overall, okay. I enjoyed this. Like, I feel this would probably be better suited for like a watching in a group. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Be better suited as like hanging out with friends kind of movie. So for me, seven out of ten. That's okay. Your, That's your what I rating gave it. was your rating was more negative than mine, but you rated it way higher. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> no, I was just saying. Like, I, I no, I said I enjoyed this movie. It just probably be better suited for hey, hanging out with the friends. Yeah, I agree. Just it's, me sitting in my kind of, room you know, alone. It's kind, of, it's kind of a hype movie. It's kind of a goofy yeah, movie. Yeah, this sounds movie. like the movie yeah. that would be so much, like, so perfect if you're just with some friends. Whenever some stupid shit happens, you just all go like, oh! <laughs> yeah, shit yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Like, it sounds like that would have been it's a lot of fun. Of movie, yeah. I think that's why yeah. I liked it a lot more also um, because I did originally see this with friends. Yeah, yeah, that it, it's a good party movie, I'd say. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah. also not a bad movie in general, so that's it. Yeah. So uh, I guess we're going to go to the showdown, and we got some different... Yeah, we're going to do something special uh, a little bit. Because... Yeah, we're going to be on hiatus for a bit because of uh, winter break. But it won't so... seem like it's hiatus because we're pretty bad at uploading already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we're going to do kind of a... I think we're, gonna, we're just going to record two episodes after the break, and we're going to watch them over the break. Yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, yeah. We are going to have two showdowns. Well, two showdowns per episode. Like so a, double, a double showdown. A double showdown, yeah. We, <laughs> one of us wins the standoff, and then we get all get resurrected, and then somebody else wins. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, so I guess I'll start. I'm going to give a movie from a director I found this year who I absolutely love so far. He's directed three movies. Um... The, the movie is Seven Psychopaths. The director is Martin McDonough. He did uh, In Bruges and Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. So okay. I hope you enjoy it. Okay. Three Billboards was like nominated for Best Picture this year, was it not? I've heard yeah, good things about was, that one. It was nominated for three 
three Oscars, I believe, and I think it deserved some of them, but it won none of them. <laughs> I think it deserved Best Picture. It's honestly one of my favorite movies ever made. But this is a different movie. This is Seven Psychopaths. Okay. Okay. Mitch, you go. Okay. My turn. He picks up a bus and he throws it back down. It is finally time. I'm doing a Godzilla. It is Godzilla against Mechagodzilla, the one that I've been saying I was going to do sooner or later. I mean, I really want to watch this, so yeah. I'm hyped. Got big, big monster yeah. fighting. I, I would have watched this one himself. earlier. I would have watched this one before, but I have this collection, and it doesn't have versus Mechagodzilla. It has Terror of Mechagodzilla. No, it's, again, no, it's against. Mechagodzilla. Oh, this is against. Okay. So There's this is a reboot version of it. Okay. Yeah. No, it's a sequel, I believe. Isn't it? It's, it it's a sequel. The if only you will. thing that it's tied to is the original film. Okay. okay. Which is there anything we need to know going in? The original film is the original Godzilla film or the original God Mecha Godzilla film? The original 54. Okay. Oh, original okay. Godzilla sequel. Okay. It's very heavily tied. <laughs> You'll see. I don't yeah. understand this series. <laughs> There's a lot. Yes. I, I, I don't blame you. There's a lot of shit. <laughs> A lot of movies, and it's like, how does this one tie into this one? It's like how if the James Bond Godzilla... series just randomly had a scene, like a sequel to like from Russia with Love, but like how, how, years later. How does Son of Godzilla fit into the canon? Yeah, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of things of like, okay, this one, it, it, this these films specifically matter, and then ignore these ones. And... When does Godzilla the animated series take place? <laughs> When does a chibi Godzilla? Oh no! Yeah, when does Godzilla land happen? All right. <laughs> okay, that's it. It's a good episode. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Bye. Bye.